are in Meltdown, Spectre, two names that have struck fear into the biggest minds all over the world. What are these two vulnerabilities and what are they doing to your phones, whether you have a Google device, an Apple device, whether you're on a Microsoft Surface, whether you're on a cloud enterprise service, practically every computer and smartphone around the world was vulnerable to these attacks. Now, what do they mean? And what's been happening over the past week? Well, we're joined by Bloomberg News, Jeremy Khan. Jeremy, thanks so much for joining us on Bloomberg. Quinn, I want to start by asking you if you could break down what Meltdown and Spectre are really doing uh, to smartphones or what they were capable of in terms of being vulnerabilities um, and, 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 how, and how they actually came into being. If you could break that down for a layperson. Sure. Um, so, you know, these are two vulnerabilities um, that are related but slightly different um, that affected, as you say, almost every semiconductor, um, every high performance semiconductor um, around the world. And, and basically what had happened is all of these um, high speed processors, um, in order to, to achieve some of those fast speeds, what they did was something called speculative execution. They basically had the processor guess what steps in a program they were going to have to execute next and then go out and start retrieving some of that data and even starting to, to perform some of the program um, before you actually ask the program, you know, before the program actually asked the processor to do that. Um, and then what would happen is if, if the program guessed wrong, it would simply discard um, that data and, and those instructions that it had already started to follow. Um, uh, but if, if, if it needed those instructions, if it had guessed correctly, it would all be all ready to execute that much faster. And, and this was a way that all the chip makers thought was a great way to sort of speed up, um, speed up the processing of their chips. Now, what Meltdown and Spectre uh, do is they found out that in some cases, um, basically, uh, th that data that the, uh, that the processor had gone out and fetched um, under the speculative execution could be accessed and read by an attacker. So somebody could, could go into your computer, into the hardware, and actually figure out what that data was. Um, and this could be passwords, this could be all kinds of sensitive information. Um, and and the, the, the two attacks are slightly different. Meltdown basically directly read uh, the data, and that affected mostly Intel uh, manufactured chips. Um, it turned out they had a particular flaw that would allow an attacker to actually directly read the content of some of that data. Um, for the other chips, um, it was slightly more complicated. It, it involved trying to trick the processor into running some of these speculative um, guesses that it in a, in a particular order that it wouldn't normally do. And then it, it, it involved some timing to try to infer, based on how long it took the processor to retrieve that information, what the content of that information was. So that was a slightly trickier uh, vulnerability for someone to exploit. But it's also much harder to solve. Um, with Meltdown, there was a fix um, that uh, is available that's been rolled out in some patches and is being rolled out. Um, with Spectre, uh, there's also some fixes people have come up with, um, but they're sort of less elegant fixes. Um, it's not clear that this issue can be entirely uh, remedied with these patches. Right, Jeremy. You know, it becomes interesting when you say that because what, what you're effectively saying, and, and judging by, by the flurry of statements that have been coming in over the past week, be it what Intel is saying, be it what Google and Apple are saying, I mean, based on one report, I think there's, what, seven, eight hundred million iPhones that could potentially be impacted by this. Uh, unless, uh, until unless, of course, they went in and installed the latest version of their OS or updated their OS. But what, what I want to understand from you is that if Apple, Google, Microsoft and the like were aware of such vulnerabilities, uh, I, I know they were working on it all of last year, but now that we're in 2018, why did this issue come to light only in November of last year? Uh, uh, clearly, that this was a bigger issue that, that they were aware of. Uh, yeah, we know that they were informed. So uh, there's a particular researcher at Google, uh, a young researcher named Jan Horn, and he discovered these vulnerabilities totally by himself um, back in, in the spring of last year. And he informed all of the chip makers, he says, on June 1st, um, June 1st of, of last year. So we know that they had from June 1st to start working on fixes. Um, and they, they did. We know that they did start to work on fixes. But we, knew it, we know also that it took them quite a while to come up with some solutions. We're not sure exactly why it took as long as it did. But we know that um, in, in the fall uh, of this year, past year, in, in sort of October, November time, they started uh, rolling out some of these patches. 
but they weren't completely honest about why uh, they were asking people to patch their systems. Um, they said they were actually trying to address an earlier vulnerability that some computer researchers had found. Now, um, people in the cybersecurity research community saw these patches being rolled out, and they actually got suspicious because they realized that um, the amount of performance impact that some of these patches would have was fairly significant, and yet, the, uh, fi the vulnerability that the companies said that they were trying to address with them was relatively minor. So they said, well, why would the companies ask us, ask all of the users around the world to take such a large hit um, in terms of the speed and, and performance of their systems um, for such a minor vulnerability? It can't actually be the real solution here. And they started, um, a lot of these cybersecurity researchers had been working around similar issues involving this, this kind of speculative execution that your processors perform, um, and they, they surmise that there must be something else going on here. And they started working very hard. And then two additional teams of computer um, security researchers were able to come up with these um, attacks, Spectre and Meltdown, um, themselves. Again, each team working independently. They um, let uh, Intel and the other chip makers know about this um, in early December that they had been able to uh, engineer these attacks, at which point um, Intel kind of fessed up and said, yes, uh, yeah, we know. We, someone else told us about this uh, actually earlier, um, and put all the researchers together, and they started coordinating how this information would be released to the public. Obviously, they didn't really want the public to know, um, and, and this is, goes for the computer science uh, researchers as well. They didn't want the public to know about these vulnerabilities until there were fixes in place. Um, so it became an issue about how quickly they could get the fixes out, what they were going to say about them, and trying to get everyone on the same page. Um, so they kind of were scrambling throughout most of December over the holiday period, um, right up through the new year, um, to try to come up with a response, roll out these patches, and, and also coordinate what they were going to say about the vulnerabilities. You know, Jeremy, and whilst you were saying that, obviously we must highlight that this isn't an Intel-specific problem, and that's something Intel's been saying as well. Whilst a lot of, uh, well, uh, devices around the world have been affected, which, which actually have Intel chipsets, Intel actually said that recent reports that these exploits are caused by a bug or a flaw uh, and are unique to Intel products are incorrect based on the analysis, many types of computing devices with many different vendors, processors, and operating systems are susceptible to these exploits. So uh, they seem to suggest that, well, obviously, uh, their, their devices are secure, but they've also gone ahead and, and you know, actually put out patches out there. Uh, they are AMD processors. Well, I'm guessing that's where the worry about, uh, well, phones comes in as well. But, but Jeremy, it, it, it's shocking, right? Because when you consider these hardware companies, they seem to be so obsessed with processor performance. You know, you have all of them telling you that their phones you get the best scores in benchmarking tests. And it just seems like there was, well, a flaw staring at you in the face. And security really took a back seat. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think if you talk to the, the cybersecurity researchers who found these vulnerabilities, they would absolutely agree with that. They would say uh, there is an inherent trade-off between performance and speed that the entire industry has been essentially in denial about, um, but or or worse, has known about but decided to, to optimize everything for speed and security has taken a back seat. Now, if you talk to the chip makers, they will say that's absolutely not true. Um, they're very aware of security. They try to engineer security into everything they do. Um, they just didn't think that these particular attacks were very likely. And as they like to point out, nobody's actually used these exploits. No one was able to use these exploits uh, that we know of uh, to actually steal any data. Um, these were theoretical uh, researchers kind of came up with these, showed that they could work, but we don't know that anybody actually used them at any point. Um, and so they, they're sort of saying, the system, look, the system worked. Um, we're, we, we do the best we can, and then we put stuff out there, and we ask the research community to try to break our systems and let us know if they do. Uh, that's what happened in this case. And look, we've put out fixes. So we've done everything right. That's what the chip makers are saying. Uh, the security researchers are a bit more skeptical, and they're saying, you really shouldn't have ever put these products out there in the first place if you had any idea that these vulnerabilities were there. And basically, any time you're uh, looking at processor speed um, and and not really focused on security, you're going to have a problem. Um, the chip makers want to say that they can sort of have their cake and eat it too, that they're doing both, um, and that they're very focused on security. Um, some people in the cybersecurity research community would disagree with them. Absolutely, Jeremy, because you know the conversations that I've had with some of the cybersecurity experts. Well, the only positive, and every, everything that you mentioned seems to seems to uh, be the same story out here in India as well. But the only positive that they told me uh, was that 
when, when it comes to these attacks, uh, it's easiest to perform these by running the code on that machine itself in that location. So doing it remotely becomes a little difficult. And I guess, uh, well, that's the only positive, but it's absolutely shocking uh, that, that these vulnerabilities were, were, were out there and, and these machines were exposed. But now let's come to the customer question, because as, a, as an aggrieved customer or as a concerned customer, anyone watching, we'd be worried as to what we can do. Is it because I was going through the Google security blog and they seem to mention that all of their devices, as long as you update well Android OSs or, or other operating systems to do with uh, related to Google products and devices, well, you're safe. Uh, Apple seems to suggest that. I think they've sort of preempted this with, with a few patches as well. Microsoft's is issued some for the Surface uh, tablets and for the other devices. What's the best way for me to protect my data, which you say could be vulnerable based on these chipset flaws? Uh, yeah, I mean, the best thing to do is follow the advice of, of these various um, operating system vendors and chip makers and install the latest updates. Um, they have, um, over the last several months, put out up updates that address this vulnerability. Um, if you have installed those updates and if you continue to patch your systems uh, when the updates are rolled out, you should probably be fine. Um, now, as I said at the beginning, uh, with this one particular um, exploit, uh, Spectre, it's not clear um, that the patch is a complete mitigation, but I think for most consumers, most of the cybersecurity experts agree, um, it's pretty good. Um, and certainly for the, uh, the meltdown um, uh, attack, uh, the patch seems to provide very effective um, prevention of that. Uh, the bigger issue has been at, at what cost in terms of performance. Now, um, for most consumers, if you're just running your phone or if you're running your laptop, you really don't have to worry about this. The, um, there's, uh, in most of the benchmark tests of these patches, there's been very little impact on performance. The bigger issue is people who are doing uh, enterprise uh, work in the cloud, uh, running large databases um, on remote servers. There, the impact um, in some of the benchmarks is considerably greater. Um, and there, you, if you look at the sort of user forums for Amazon, AWS, um, you'll see a lot of people complaining, particularly people who are on the older um, servers that Amazon offered customers for slightly less money, um, that th some of those people have had uh, bigger performance hits. And um, in some of those cases, AWS seems to be advising people, well, you should really upgrade to our latest, you know, fastest, um, most, uh, most high performance servers, and then you won't I experience the same problem. Um, I don't know if that's very satisfying for, for those business users. Um, but if you're a consumer user, if you're worried about your phone, you don't really, or your laptop, um, and as long as you've installed those patches, you really shouldn't have to worry, right. and, and the hit on your performance shouldn't be very much. Um, for business customers, again, it depends sort of what services you're using, right. um, and I think it remains to be seen exactly how this will impact uh, business users. But uh, I guess most cybersecurity right. experts are saying, look, the performance hit is not so great um, compared to the potential of d you know, losing that data in some sort of cyber attack, so you might as well install the patch. Right, Jeremy, you know, on that positive note, well, another positive from this whole thing is, is how the Googles, the Apples, the Amazons, and the Microsofts of the world are actually well, fighting on the same side. So I think that's one positive we can take from this conversation as well. But thanks so much for joining us, Jeremy, and thanks all of you for tuning in to Bloomberg Quint.